Lawmakers in the Green Chamber settle down to the business of the day. They begin by responding to reports in the public space that the National Assembly plans to exclude electronic transmission of results during the passage of the much-anticipated Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Mr. Speaker, I've been part of the process of this new law. I've gone through all the stages of this law. There was never a time I and my colleagues were involved in such. Because of the uh, cacophony of voices, and because you have raised that matter of privilege, uh, and I guess to allay fears, let me just say that I have asked the chairman of the committee, she is not aware of any such, so it remains in the realm of speculation, and uh, we'll wait till the committee submits its report. And following the increased attacks on INEC facilities, the House of Representatives is urging the federal government to provide adequate security in all INEC offices nationwide. At least 19 INEC offices have been gutted by fire with a ratio of one INEC office per month. Concern that if nothing is done to forestall future occurrences, there will not be adequate INEC offices to coordinate the, two, the 2023 and off-season elections in Nigeria. Meanwhile, a bill to give legal backing to creation of state police and other state government security services scales second reading. Mr. Speaker, we have heard about the Hizba police in Kano. We've heard about the uh, Amote Kun that has been in the southwest. And then we've heard about the Bubagu in southeast. These are efforts by state government to try to fill in the gap and then fill in the lacuna that has existed um, because of the overwhelming uh, nature of the security crisis in this country on the police. We have had situations in this country that ordinarily this issue of state police should have been addressed long time ago. But good enough, the recurrence with which it appears and comes up in efforts to alter the constitution gives vent to the fact that it is needed. The bill seeks to move the legislation of policing from the exclusive to the concurrent I'm list. Sure. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. All right, so yeah, that's where we start off this morning, and they are in Abuja. Hello, Makwe. Hello, Chamberlain, and good morning to our viewers, and good morning to our guest here in the studio. We have with us Mr. Ezekiel Nyaitok, who's the Director General of Nigeria First Project. Thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> <laughs> you're saluting like you're reporting for duty. Exactly. <laughs> and we also have uh, Mr. Yunus Otanko, who is a former presidential candidate of the National Conscience Party. You're welcome to Sunrise Thank Daily you very this much morning. For me. Good morning, Jamal. Good morning. Interesting times we've been in, especially looking at what's been happening at the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. First, it was the PIB, and then just when. Uh, we heard that the PIB was about to be passed, and we now heard about the Electoral Act as well. Uh, well, the Electoral Act has been on the table for some time, mm. um, with CSOs calling our attention to it to, you know, push the National Assembly to eventually pass the amendments before even the Anambra elections. Yeah. Um, and the National Assembly did give its word that it was going to be passed in the first quarter of the year. Sadly, that wasn't done, despite the work done by committee members. Uh, only for us to now start hearing about this um smuggling or changing of clauses in the bill but then we have heard denials on the part of members of the house especially the speaker of the house of representatives saying there is no such thing um how has this allayed your fears let me start with you mr etok um the very first thing is that i feel pained by the extent to which mr president um does not seem to understand the priorities 
in governance. And I say this with every sense of responsibility. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. I'll start from him. Secondly, I feel, I do not know if I should say I feel disappointed, um, not really disappointed, uh, because by the time these National Assembly members were contesting elections, the amount of money they spent, the extent to which it was a do or die affair, should have told us that they were coming in not for service, but it was a transaction. As a result, when they get into office, you should naturally expect them to get what they got in there for. And the time has come when Nigerians need to really know that you can't have your cake and eat it, and nobody's a fool. So what they are doing really does not in any way um, surprise me. I'll tell you why I said Mr. President first. The National Assembly is like expecting a dog to meow or a cat to bark. They sold their soul, their lives, everything to pay us at the election and we happily collected the money. Okay? So when they go in, they should recoup their investment. On account of that... Are you being fair to all members of the National Assembly? I should not use the same brush to paint everybody. Indeed. So I shouldn't do that. But the fact is that I'm referring to over 80% of the people. And, I, and the average Nigerian knows that I'm telling the truth. Okay? So it's transactional. And the third set of people I blame is the Nigerians. If you want somebody to... Somebody wants to wash your dress for you and the person is paying you to wash your dress. Common sense should tell you that there's something you should look at again. You should pay the person, you should beg the person to wash your dress, to serve you. Nobody pays you to serve you. It doesn't work that way. Back to Mr. President. This is a man who's been a head of state before in this country. This is a man who's been everything. This is a man who is old and retiring. This is a man who's wanted to be Mr. President for three terms before he got the third term, before the fourth time he succeeded. He should understand what governance is all about. He should understand what service, giving back to the country is all about. Why would a man who has been unjustly treated, according to him, three times, he's gone as far as to the Supreme Court, eventually get into office? And his first priority is not to set straight the processes that have meted such injustices on him on three occasions. He gets the first term. He finishes the first term. The electoral bill came, and he says, it's too late for me to sign it now. There will be confusion. Forgetting that, good luck, Jonathan signed it almost on the day of election to allow for electronic voting, which worked for him. He says it's too close, so now we took it that he's a very prim and proper person. He doesn't want to rush or rock the process. Now it is two years, over two years, into his second term, and less than two years to the next general election. We, and Mr. Must, President not has not... making any excuses, but we have to put into context, you know, things that have happened in the second year particularly. Yes. Um, the fact that there was COVID and there was very little... While these were going on, on approvals government. for loans were taking, <laughs> were coming faster. And I want to ask you, Malcolm, my, my sister, between approval for loans and electoral law sanitization, which is higher priority? So as things were going on, Loans were being approved. Time near So, well, uh, <laughs> there will be huge questions on that one. But, you know, for those who, for the joint committee members who had their sit-in, they said their work was finished by early this year, that they had since finished it and transmitted it to the leadership of the House. But let me quickly, of, of the National Assembly, I think I need to be more specific. Let me quickly take the th thoughts of Mr. Tanko on this. Mm. Uh, I think you addressed the press conference on, electoral, on this electoral act. Is that correct? That's correct. The amendment. And you had your fears. Mm. Shortly afterwards uh, was when we heard the speaker. I mean, we saw a member of the, of the House of Representatives uh, raised a matter of privilege. He said his privilege had been breached. And uh, the Speaker of the House, you know, reassured himself and all Nigerians who were watching uh, that nothing has been done to the best of his knowledge about the Electoral Act. It's still the same way it's been transmitted. It, the gazetted 
a version done by the joint committees is what is still in the position of the leadership, or at least in his possession. We haven't heard categorical statements from the Senate, but coming from the Speaker, did that feel reassuring to you after you addressed the press conference? Well, uh, 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 yes, it is. This is the kind of thing that we want to, because we are preempting them. And you see, when it starts like this, you just hear that uh, they are coming, they are coming, oh, they are not coming, they are coming, you are doubtful. And then before you knew it, they are overwhelming you. And this is when this, the whole process of clean, free, free and fair elections start from. If you miss it from this point, at the end of it, what you have is wrong process of uh, election. What you have at the end of it, you have problems with INEC. What you have eventually is that you have violence in the system. At the end of it all, what do you have? You have leaders who have no business with governance. And this is exactly what would have been the end product of missing this particular process now. And that's why we, we, we came out en masse to really follow the process and how they are going about it. What One, makes your suspicions? I'm very interested in that. Good. The, the truth about it is that, first of all, there was section three, subsection three of that particular electoral act. The presumed doctor document states that um, we, there was a proposal that look, INA should get its, uh, its allocation yearly. And then two years before the process of election, at least their money should have been given to them so that they will have uh, good organization and nobody interfere with the issue of financing and all. But the doctor document was saying that, no, it will be a one year prior to that particular election. And then before you knew it, I know we'll be running cap in hand, asking for political parties to support them or even the government begging them to give them money to run election. And of course, that gives room for corrupt, corrupt tendencies. That was one. Two, the issue of section 50, subsection two, would deal with the electoral uh, 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 reporting of voting. All of us applauded INEC. INEC is trying to do everything that it can to ensure that we have clean, clear elections. Coming from a backdrop of a lot of accusations. Now, there was an improvement in what we saw in Edo and Undo. Every one of us was happy about the way in which the transmission of results. You and I know, and every Nigerian knows that at a point in time when we're having election, you will find out that there are people on the social media who create sensational results. In Edo and Odo, it was not, there was no room at all for that because the, 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 the result that was transmitted at the polling station was the same result that was already transmitted by INEC and the same result that any other person who wants to be a social uh, 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 soldier, social media soldier, is transmitting. So there was trust being built. The issue of coalition center was completely almost eliminated, which was a big problem for a lot of political parties, not being able to get election. You may have voting taking place in the polling station. The result will be different before you knew it. And that was taken care of. Then section 60, 60, 65 would deal with the issue of duress, of announcing of results. And that was some of the things that happened in, um, in Imo State. And here, we are saying that INE should have an opportunity seven days after the election to, you know, review the result. And they are saying no to that particular area. Section 76 was talking about registration of political parties. Of course, in that area, that INEC should, of course, you know, uh, can be taken to court seven days after maybe denial of approval. Finally, come the issue of Section 88. 88 was talking, Section 88 was talking about fun, uh, campaign financing. We all are aware of this particular humongous use of money to buy votes. Now you are saying that you are jacking up the proposed one billion naira from presidential uh, campaign expenditure to 15 billion. The question is that, where do you expect these people to get this kind of money from? No, so they, what they say is they have raised the cap. It doesn't mean that you, don't, you have to spend up to the cap. If you raise the cap, then you're giving room for people to hide under it if they spend within that particular period or amount and even to bribe or they have enough to source for funding from any kind of places. Mm. And that denies other individuals who want to have a kind of a credible election. We have candidates who do not have this huge sum of money. Begging it to that particular one billion naira is more or less like saying, okay, look, you don't have that laxity of resources to even go into possibility of manipulating the system. 
We are also talking about the issue of political nomadism, which is key. Majority of the political parties that are deregistered today are run, have been deregistered That's because right. they were not able to win political party uh, offices. And I give an example of the National Conscience Party as, uh, as a case study. When we won election in Ikiti State, Ikiti State, before you knew it, our members ran away and joined the, 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 the PDP. And there was no punishment. And he will maintain his seat. That is the most annoying part of it. Mm. You cannot win election and sell a social contract within my, uh, yourself to a political uh, to the electorate, and then within a short period of time, you change to another political party, carrying another manifesto to that particular, and then maintaining your seat. It's a treasonable offense against the people that elected you. Uh, have you tried to, I mean, I don't know whether they have an attempt to at least correct that in electoral act. But, I don't think they have. But what I'm very interested in, you have stated the areas where you notice discrepancies. Yes. The question is, what's the source? Uh, because some people will yes. say yes. Uh, that I, I, maybe I, this <laughs> was all a hoax. Maybe this was just uh, maybe testing of the waters. Maybe there was really no smoke. So, <laughs> maybe there was no fire anywhere. No, no. And we all no, were just getting alarmed no, over nothing. Before it gets started, that's why I told you that when you are, they're telling you they are coming, they are coming, I say, no, they are not coming. Before you knew it, they overwhelmed you. <laughs> so, we have been careful. We've had series of opportunities. We've let it lose for a very long time. For both the political parties, the civil society, and the rest. We allow these people to take charge of these particular uh, rules and regulation of engagement mm -hmm. because they are in position of power. And they are making a mistake because the previous experience has shown that if you make faulty rules, you will end up being affected in the future. They should ask the other people who have been in power the first, the first time before them. So now they are making rules. And we have sense to believe that because there was a nomination by Mr. President mm. of, his, of an aide of his <laughs> to become a member of the umpire, mm. thereby polluting the system. We, we, if that situation comes in... We will talk about we, that. Uh -huh. we, we will talk about so that. So we are being careful. What, what I want to know mm -hmm. is whether or not you feel um, reassured after the speaker spoke. Did you feel a sense of reassurance, or did you still have doubts in your mind? Well, at, at this point in time, as he has already denied that there no, there's nothing like that, it's good. We will further wish that what is already put on the table should be made public so that we will know that the document that they are trying to pass contain A, B, C as agreed, even though all of it, all of the document, all of the position is not all that is agreeable by all of us, but at least let's have the minimum threshold that every Nigerian will be happy. It builds trust. It takes away all of these problems. Even the issue of, uh, uh, issue of uh, insecurity in the country, if you have good leaders, you won't have insecurity. Mm. Because at the end of it all, it affects everybody. So it affects them as much as it affects us. So, so let, before let, they make it, let, get it wrongly, let us start putting them on their own and say, look, look, get me, check me, be careful. Let me repose that question yes. to Mr. Hitter, because when I asked you that question, somehow I think the answer <laughs> I was expecting wasn't what I got. I'll, I'll ask again. So he says that at least he feels some sense of reassurance. Did you feel the same, or do you want some concurrence from the Senate? Be before the reassurance, the smoking gun, mm -hmm. when someone tells you, I'll let this out by next month, and the committee have finished their work, they've finished their work, is just to lay before the house, and then the time came, you delayed by several months. The question is, why was the delay? That's the smoking gun. Some people must have said, no, it can't be. And in the National Assembly or within political circles, you know this as much as I do, that the moment people are uncomfortable, the next thing is to try to change the areas of their discomfort. Number two, what they do not know, which they should know that, they should know by now, is that there are some members who by convention are not coming back to the National Assembly because in some areas you have zoning. For instance, I'm from Ikode Kwenye Central District and we used to rotate between two axes, the back five, Ikode Kwenye five, and use you one term, you know, before somebody was smart enough to do something else. But there are some people that have that convention that has been over the period. As a result, some of the members of the National Assembly, we have been able to run, ring, run rings around them to be able to extract things from them because they are like nothing to lose. I'm not coming back. 
So they should know that we have almost verbatim report of every committee proceedings. And that these people already have some of those documents. So if they make any alteration, we already know what the original documents are. And some of us, I came in from Uyo, we are ready to go and no violence, sit down. Because this process, they can't change it. I am telling you and take my word, they cannot change it. Cannot. Not should not. Cannot. Because the, we are sick and tired of being taken for granted. Even if it's not perfect, at least what we have seen so far will make for some level of sanity. Tanko has just said that transmission of results is one of the biggest frauds in this country, one of the worst frauds you can imagine. Now, by the time that you have 20 votes in your unit, you have in my unit 10, then 10, you put it together, and they discover that you are making progress. They just discard everything that has been written. They go to the, um, uh, the what was this officer, they call them again? Coalition, Coalition. Coalition officers. And they just change everything. By the time you see these final figures, and you know their law, announce we go to court. That is, it started from somewhere in Delta State some time back. Just announce we'll meet in court. So by the time you have the electronic transmission of results, the question of announcing results under duress does not quite come up again because even before you announce, you are, just, you are not really quite significant. It's just a ceremony because INEC already has all the, the results at the back end. And because we know that our vote will count, people were starting to like warm up. So whether he says it or the Senate president says it, I am honestly not bothered. I'm waiting for the thing to be laid in the house. There are some parts I'm not comfortable with, no problem. No, no law is perfect. But that one that was arrived at by the joint committee, Nigerians have it. Every reasonable, responsible Nigerian has it. And by the time they lay it on the floor of the house, and it is not what was agreed, and some members are willing to testify, okay? Somebody will have to tell us who altered it, and we will get to the root of it. This is not going to be a family affair. This is a Nigerian thing, and it's not about... Uh, uh, Tanko and I, we're not in the same party, okay? He's in NCP, I'm in ADC. But we are agreed. PDP, APC, we are agreed. We are unanimous in the fact that let this thing be done free, fair, credible. And, and, and that's it. So whether uh, the speaker has said it, I'm happy he said it, and his integrity is on the line. Nigerians are watching. And I hope that the Senate president can also say something. His silence is deafening. Well, I do know that recently something, uh, there was... Um, there was an event, uh, an inauguration of one of the government agencies, and he did say uh, that if people are uncomfortable with any provisions of the Electoral Act, uh, they will have to see their representatives uh, to deal with it. The question is... No, no, those wait, are two different wait. issues. He's being smart. I'm, I'm sorry, maybe smart by half. No, <laughs> we're... The, the, the fact question that, a number of Nigerians will ask is which version of the electoral Thank you. Of the electoral the, thank act. you. He did not address, but Javier Amila, with all due respect, address the fact that there's no alteration. He is saying if you are uncomfortable, if you are not okay with what we have, the question is like, like you asked, which of the versions of what we have? There are some parts of the original version which we have access to that we'll not be comfortable with. But it doesn't matter. It can be done with next time mm. since the committees have come to that conclusion but that one where they don't reach you the one where we don't see now they don't go change that mm. why this is extremely important why the version story is important i remember my colleague having a conversation with uh, senator kabiru gaya uh, of the of the uh, senate committee on electoral on electoral matters yeah. and um, i think on yeah, INEC as well INEC. And um, also Honorable Solomon Bob from yes. the House. Yes. And uh, there were versions of which he was quoting, yes. uh, putting questions to Senator Gaia, yes. uh, talking about this um, cap, which has yes. now been increased yes. for electoral 
um, campaign for campaign, yeah. yes, for campaigns. And um, Senator Guy didn't deny the figures. Instead, he justified them. And it, the justification, it was, it made a lot of sense. Uh, for now, for, for a long time, the cap had been at, a, I think, at one billionaire for, yes, for president. presidential. And it would seem that no party, or maybe very few parties, the two major parties yeah. have oftentimes obeyed the law in reach. Yeah. Uh, and some people have said, well, that is, first and foremost, it doesn't define when the campaign starts, which part of the campaign is it? Is it from when you start lobbying your members within the party? Is it from, you know, is it when you become a candidate? It is not very specific. Mm. Is it when you're still an should, aspirant? I think it should be when you become a candidate. Mm. You As know, an aspirant, then, you're not on election box. So that's one. And then the yeah. second is, uh, but all those funds will count. Yeah. The, the second is inflation. Yeah. Uh, that in, we have to take inflation into context as well. What are your thoughts on that? I know you have very strong issues uh, with that particular provision because you think that somehow it removes the smaller political parties. Yes. Uh, but if this particular provision has been obeyed more in the breach than you know, following the letters, and there have been very little consequences, don't you think that there needs to be a more realistic review um, of these figures? Even as it's where. The campaign uh, expenditure fund, how well has it been managed or been enforced or been dealt with if they are found in, 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 def in defect of the action? That is the reason why majority of us has clamored that the shoe, island should be balkanized in such a way that we have an enforcement agency to take care of these issues of malfeasance in our electoral process. Look, nobody has been arrested or dealt with for using campaign funds beyond the threshold that has been established. And we allow it, and then it puts a lot of people in danger. Look, what it does to the system is very, very sad. 15 billion, for example, you ask for a candidate. A majority of these candidates who are running for election are either in position of power already. What they do is they, they uh, assumably, the siphon treasury from the resources of the country, money that were meant for developmental processes are put in the hands of one individual, and then he, he has to find a way of getting his own share of it, use it again at the detriment of the people to finance his own election, making it difficult for those who may be better than he or she at the, at the polls to run for election. So giving that opportunity is more or less that encouraging corruption. So, but when you limit it to a level, it gives room for people who do not have that sum, sum of money, at least it's curtailed. People, who, you know you don't have that money, so where would you, who would you give the money to? You wouldn't give it out. So, it, you will be curtailed. But when you have that particular opportunity of getting this, and this is what they said, oh, let me look for more so that I can be able to can you imagine at a polling station giving an agent 10,000 naira, 120 naira increase. Can you make that mathematical mathematics? Mm. That's a huge sum of money. And, so, and so that, 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 that's part. one way of thinking about it. <laughs> yes. I, I do recall that uh, prior to the 2015 elections, uh, when the APC was newly formed, uh, they did try to find a creative way to raise funds from amongst Nigerians. Uh, but I think that that means was stopped uh, by the then ruling party or so, that it wasn't within the, the, the norms or it was not allowed, so to speak, something. Yeah. I can't quite remember what it was, but I think it, w it was to make a process easy for Nigerians who are interested to give, uh, to give. Yes. Um, you, you could do the donation over your phone. Yes. So assuming a political party, a small political party, yes. you know, in, and I use that word advisedly, yes. uh, where to find a creative way yeah. to get Nigerians to buy into yeah. its own vision, yeah and wants to raise funds, yeah. do you think that it wants to be limited uh, by how much it, it could raise if it, if it needs to match the bigger political parties? I'm okay. closing this to it, okay. it, It's where I have a reservation and disagreement with the original version. I believe that that figure, on, unfortunately I will disagree with my brother here, I believe that that figure is so grossly in unrealistic 15 billion even 15 billion not the talk of 1 billion the reason is this i want to run a campaign 
And I come up with, like I, I have, social governance ideology. And it resonates with the people. We need to make sure that campaign is funded and run by the people. The people of Akwaibom State, for instance, say, look, we want to raise 1,000 for you. And then there's a mass mobilization, a mass movement of people, and they want to do that for me. Because people are believing that this government, if you leave them the way they are, digging into the treasuries and they think they will always do it, that there has to be a way of changing the narrative. And as a result, people are coming in. Now, if I want to have a campaign office, I can either pay for that office or somebody donates that office. If somebody donates that office, how do you quantify the cost to that? Somebody can donate his vehicle, which I could have bought. People can donate things. Let us not bother ourselves. There are certain limits that are ridiculous. For instance, 500, um, 15 billion is less than 500 million per state for a campaign for presidency. Okay? And I'm thinking of Mr. President who wants to set up his structure in my state, which is a quiet boom state. What figure? We have 31 local government areas. What sort of figure makes it reasonable for him to spend in each local government area? If you're talking of like 10 million, I don't think it's absolutely ridiculous, okay? For 10 million for local government that has about 11 wards, okay, which is like a million per ward. It's not really, really horrible. Or horrendous. If you take, say, 10 million, that's about 300 million in Akwaibom state. Let's take Akwaibom as a model, and you say 300 million. If you multiply that by about 31 states, you are getting close to 10 billion. Is the base figure unrealistic of 1 million per where per word? It is not unrealistic. On the other hand, if you now Bring it down to one billion because that's ten billion. You're talking about a hundred thousand naira per ward. Now that could be absolutely ridiculous because some some local governments have as much as fourteen wards. You're talking in terms of fifty thousand naira per ward. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. Mm. So, if you are a small party, is there any way you can network the people so that the rent that the big party paid for it is supplied, the vehicles that the big party paid for it can be supplied. Let's make the processes free, fair, and credible. And the people will migrate to the smaller parties knowing their vote will count. And the money of the big parties can be reduced to, 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 to nonsense. So let's have a credible way of making people know that their vote will count. And then we'll be able to match indirectly the resources. But don't go and approve something ridiculous like 50 billion. No, it doesn't make sense. Let the cap be what makes sense. Let us take a break. I'll, I'll let you intervene okay. in this matter. When we come back from this break, please stay with us. Oh, yes, indeed. Our mailbox was full yesterday to bursting point. And I hope that you see some of your meals being taken there. And as today, as much as possible, we will be taking the feedback we'll get from you, as many as we can. But in the meantime, uh, during the breaks, you will be seeing some of your meals on display. We'll still have with us Mr. Ezekiel Inya, a talk DG, Nigeria First Project, and also Mr. Yunus Atanko, former presidential candidate of the National Conscience Party. And we're talking about the proposed electoral amendment and the controversy that has since dogged this particular amendment, at least the version which is now said to be in the possession of the leadership of the National Assembly. And we're talking about a particular provision just before we went on break. You were yeah. about to intervene yes, I on was. the cap. Yes, campaigns. I was about saying that the issue is about transparency and reduction of corrupt manipulation in the system. Now, don't forget, we want the people to own this, the, the process. Each of these political parties are supposed to have structures down to the world. So it's not a four-year market that you always head of them will be waiting for money to be brought in by any presidential candidate at a point in time to run for election. And that would not give credibility to the system at all. It will not give ownership to the people. Normal election is being run by the people from the grassroots. 
They even support their candidate by donations and making flyers and all of those ones. So that way, there will not be a kind of say that... Okay, How do you quantify that? Doesn't, shouldn't that count as well that will as be, part of the 15 billion? No, that will be expenditures of the political party at each of their world level. Every political that party will not a, come into the campaign funds? No, no. no. It will when, not count when, as when, campaign when it, funds? When it's, cam, when it's campaign period, of course it will count. But every party structure needs to account for its expenditure at every point in time. And that's why we're supposed to have auditors going around and ensuring that how much was generated. The issue here is transparency. Take a look at the case of United now, States. Now, what I'm asking you is this. No. He, Mr. Etok made reference to donations being made. Yes. You have also made allusions to that. that yes. Is, uh, at the grassroots levels, people could support, you know, their candidates or their political parties by printing flyers and things of the sort. Mm. Those are not direct funds given mm. to the political party. Yes. As, if, an, if an auditor were to audit... Yes. I don't know if how that was going to be captured, that people just made flyers, for instance, yes. in support. They don't have to even give it directly to the political party yes. before it is distributed. Yes. It yes. could be of their own free will yes. uh, to just do it in their own community and that's that. Yes. How do you, assuming that were to be captured um, in, the, in, the, in the expenditure of the political party, how do you monetize that? How do you quantify that? Uh, but this one is being given specifically by the uh, appropriate for the presidential or any other election specifically. Mm -hmm. And all other expenditures, of course, the party expenses that comes along with it. Okay, may you can assume that it is part of support for campaign election and all. But it has been pegged that this is what you can spend as a presidential candidate. It's specific. Okay, you didn't say the general political party. So you, when you jam it together, it becomes an issue. But then it, you have to account that so, so, so amount of money being generated by this party to support the political candidate. But the presidential candidate spend X amount of money. It being specific. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the reason why... agree with that? How do you quantify the cost of Mr. President going with the, 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 the country's jet to all his campaigns? That is all acceptable. How, that is all acceptable. How do you quantify that cost? That is all acceptable. Because the political party, look at what happened in Brazil. You know that Silva at the point in time was almost was sanctioned because of when he was going to a party meeting, he used the presidential I, jet. I think that monitoring campaign funds has been an exercise in futility. Rather, we should have certain policies. If you are contesting and you are a governor, maybe six months or as soon as campaign starts, make sure that you leave the instruments of state, probably hand over to maybe the speaker or something and operate your campaign from your funds and party funds. Because you see this fleet of 50 SUVs intimidating opponents. And they're all government vehicles funded by public money. I want to contest against maybe my governor, for instance. Part of my taxpayers' money is being given to my opponent who has 50 SUVs going for a campaign and woo woo, and then I'm now going with, with maybe 10, and I look like Boy Scout. And you know, politics is visibility. It's like, this is what big governor. He sees only one, two, three, they are counting my cars. But the other one comes and like, wow, 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 with siren on top. I mean, it doesn't, those are the sort of laws I'm expecting people to make for a level playing ground. But we, we can't be, some people like are rich, some people have the capacity, and, and they want some styles and finesse into their campaign. I don't have any problem. I mean, I can say that because by God's grace, I'm likely contesting in my state against people that when you hear is like, wow, how else? But I'm not bothered by them because if, you, if the electoral process is fair, you will know that a state like a quiet bomb state, as much as people think people run after money, People have a very sense of do rightness. But they're like, brother, you know, this will, they will do what they want to do. There's no need wasting. But the moment that the coast is clear, just tell me, bring your billions, I don't care, but let it be your money, not my taxpayers' money, okay? Bring it. Two can play. I'm ready to match because I'm ready to go down. And secondly, I next should be able to, even for reason of, the, 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 the health situation of the country, ban these rallies. Because these rallies is about spending money, speaking loud, and saying nothing. 
reduce it because of COVID protocols mm -hmm. to town hall meetings. Even in the heat of uh, yeah, COVID. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make... Those the, are the in, sort of in, regulations. In the heat of COVID, when we they, thought, okay, just, the Edo elections were going to... You, saw, you saw the controversy. What's so that difficult, I yeah. ask, in saying, reduce your campaigns to town hall meetings. Mm. Have one mega rally, if you must. Do you understand me? Because part of this spending that in the big parties... The, in fairness to the candidates, they did try to reduce the crowd at their events. I mean, I think it went from word to word. It was a lot more Let laborious, it become institutionalized but, yeah, but, so that you can now discuss issues with the but people. But in terms of crowd, I mean, there yes. was still a small crowd, a um, sizable yeah. crowd yeah. at each of the uh, events that they went for. Let me quickly throw this now to my colleagues in, in Lagos. I'm sure that they have questions for you. Gentlemen. Mr. Yetok, some of those points, I mean, I mean, for the sake of argument, they're actually very interesting points. But I mean, when you look at the provisions of the Constitution, not even some of those bills, you begin to wonder how workable is it to have an incumbent be stripped six months to elections? I mean, the president is still the president, regardless of whether he's running for elections. But maybe we'll take on this uh, some other time. But quite interesting points, I must say. And I think it's also good that both of you have participated in the election process. So whatever comes out of this you know, amendment will have its effect on your activities as candidates, as political parties. But let me quickly ask Mr. Tanko, especially regarding that funding, uh, the workability and the enforcement. So um, during the process of election, the expenses, how well did INEC or you know, other you know, regulatory bodies, INEC I should say actually, uh, monitor your spending such that they knew that you spent this particular amount for that election? Was it really enforced for your party and for your election? No, I, th I think what they just did was just to follow uh, statutory protocol by asking you to declare uh, your source of uh, money and how did you spend it, where and where and when. And that was, those are the things that they did. They just give you a form and then you fill the form and then you return back to satisfy all righteousness. But when it comes to the issue of enforcement, there was nothing like enforcement because uh, Anek didn't really look so much, but they, they were very, very critical as they got to reporting what you spend. And then eventually they would send an auditor to come and audit uh, what you said you spend and probably verify some of your records and ensure that it has followed due process. And that's all. So those, of, those political parties who are, who are spending beyond the threshold we are not penalized. And in fact, there was a lot of report as regard to the issue of campaign finances during the period, last 2019 general election. I, at the end of it all, it was just like, let it just go. Nobody dealt with it in any way. So there is no particular bite as regard to punishment being maintained on those who are. And, and these issues bring us back to some of the examples that have been laid down by United States, for example. The source of money is being declared. Um, there is a public funding, like for example, 45 million US dollars during the time of uh, McCain and uh, Obama. Okay, the public funding is about 45 million US dollars, but uh, Obama, who wants to get more than 45 million US dollars, has to go out to seek, seek for public support where he got 150 million US dollars. But here, yeah, the, the difference here is that. It is the people who donate, and then accountability is being given, and there's transparency in the system. Here, majority of the, uh, uh, the source of funding were not as that it been as, uh, uh, transparent as it were. Uh, if I could just uh, get a little, a little more clarification on that. To continue. Just a minute, if you can. Uh, how did they audit your account? Did you submit your financial statements, and, and to who? To INEC, or what? Of course. First of all, there's a... There's a, there's a Campaign, there's a finance document that Annex gives to you as a CD. And in that CD, it, uh, it gives you, uh, it tabulates questions on how much did you generate, as when, and who gave that particular X amount of money. How do you generate that sum of money? And so, after you're giving this particular document to INEC, INEC will now empl uh, they employ auditors who visit your office to check those particular uh, claims that you made, whether they are true or not. So the CD has been given to all political parties. I remember filling my own particular form almost after the elections. 
uh, in 2019. And in fact, INEC is so critical about it because uh, there's a time limit being given for you to have re make returns as regard to those particular documents. So if you don't make it, uh, I remember the INEC chairman coming out publicly to say ABC political party were able to submit within the time and so, so, so political party did not submit at all. So the documents are there with INEC at the moment as we speak. Okay, so that was for you at the presidential campaign level. Let me ask uh, Mr. Etok, for, your, for you at, at the governorship level, was there any such procedure? Yes. Did it apply to you? Okay. Okay. Um, no, it, didn't, it doesn't apply to candidates. It's parties. And um, from what Unisa said, once we were together as a party chairman, and I next specifically said that one of the two parties that submitted was, as, as at then, YDP, where I was the national chairman. Probably his party was the second party. But, um, Chamberlain, that form is just an exercise in futility. That form makes no sense whatsoever to the best of my knowledge. That form is not for UNISA's party or my party then, or even my current party, because where do you raise 15 billion from? I will tell you how party funding comes. I will tell you the roles that banks play. I will tell you that this money is banks know how to get across to you so that it does not reflect in your report. I will tell you all these things. Why can't they make such documents open? Those fund stuff, you know, only applied to two parties, APC and PDP, and no INEC will have the gods, with all due respect, to publish what these two parties presented, because it would be absolutely ridiculous, absurd. It would, it, would be, it would be, I don't even know the word to use to it. So I think that we really should make laws that are enforceable. That's one of the reasons that I have a lot of respect for the current INEC chairman. If I fell in love with him, the first INEC... Just a minute. Be before you proceed on that uh, uh, trajectory, that yes. just a minute. Uh, isn't that where perhaps both of you, in addition to civil society groups, come in here, in addition to some of these provisions that the country is talking about, having this, saying, look, publish those details, spendings of political parties, if we need to entrench transparency. Isn't that where groups like yours, both of you, should actually champion or add, lend your voices we, to we, such provisions? We, 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 have, we, we have time and time again, even evoking this Freedom of Information Bill. But the question is, what is the sanction? Are you going to deregister the party? Are you going to ask them to pay penalty? I mean, why make a law that you can't see the end of the law? So sometimes when you go there, the question is, so if they're in breach, what do we do to them? You, you can't go ahead and say, I will remove your candidate. You can't do any of these things. It doesn't make sense. It's a law that I can't really see the end of. So for, that's so, why I spend more energy on yeah. sanitizing the processes. Yes, you want to say something. When you say the banks know how to get around some of these things, are you speaking from experience? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And I say it with every sense of responsibility. You want to tell the me about it? The moment you become a candidate in one of the major parties, you see banks. I mean, I've been there with governors. Banks come. And it's like, I mean, I don't even know what so to say. But how did you play out in your secret. campaign Let's, in order to and further train transparency so we can stamp this kind of practice out. Tell us about it. Oh, oh, the two things. Number one is that one of the reasons I decided to join ADC after I became partyless was because I had to sit down and ask, look at the operating protocols of each of the parties. And as of today, ADC is one party that is making sure that parties' um, uh, members donate. And then we are going back into strengthening parties, giving certain working guidelines, and it's working. And I'm, I'm happy. Mr. Tok, I, what I meant was, this you said that they passed, provided avenue for you, or for people, or for parties, or candidates to get around party funding. How did that exactly happen? Yes. How did that exactly happen? I'll tell yeah. you two things. The first is that 
when they are auditing your account or your, your report, your, 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 your financial statement, the benchmark is your account. So they know that if this money is put in your account, there will be a trace to it. Okay? And these are banks. So they will know how to help you navigate the mind. Chamberlain, this is what we all know. It's not like Nyaitok has come here to say anything that is interesting or that is, um, that is um, a revelation. It's no revelation. Banks, have, you know, they want your FAC account. So they become your strategic election partners. The moment they see that you are a candidate that can, make, that can win an election. It, it, it's no secret now. Let's look at what the secret. Banks. This is an open uh, how secret. so many of these banks the are going account. to do this? I mean, for maybe like 10 political parties or 10 governorship candidates thinking that maybe one of them will, will, will emerge uh, victorious. So what if none of them becomes victorious? But that's a matter for a lot of time. Let me ask uh, uh, Dr. That's Tanko. That's business. Do you, business do you you think, yeah, uh, Dr. Tanko, is INEC in all of the things that uh, uh, Mr. Yetuk has talked about and you also may have experienced, is INEC in any way culpable in not being able to get the, uh, in this melee of this final campaign funding that we're talking about, is INEC in any way culpable? No, no, no. You see, the truth about it is that there's one thing that you need I'm to I'm asking about because, this just INEC one moment, leadership. I'm asking because, I mean, you, Mr. Yetuk just said, it, and it may be your experience as well, that uh, the INEC is not able to publish the, 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 the financial records or spendings of some of these they political did. parties, especially the big ones. Go on. Go ahead. They did. What they do is that they didn't go in details. One thing you need to know about this INEC chairman at the moment is that he tries as much as possible, whatever he's making his decision, he ties it around the laws of the land. So he will not be found wanting in any way. So anytime you make any position, he will refer you to the position of the law. And so flawlessly, and then you find out that whatever he's saying, you may not like it, but that is what the provision of the law is. In, the, in regard to this particular campaign financing, they published the document, but they didn't go into details. So the, 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 the question is that he didn't say give details account as published, but they will publish that X amount of money was spent by social political party, and probably it has gone beyond the threshold or even below the threshold. Uh, and I've, I've seen that in the published newspapers and all. And in fact, some of the civil society uh, political parties take it up. Uh, I remember G.J. Ojo in one of their uh, NDI who are dealing with campaign finances, specifically uh, elucidate and amplify on this particular campaign finances and give uh, details account on how these finances were being spent and even make queries as regard to some of the way in which the money was generated and how they were being spent and also questioning the fact that the position that was being made by any of the political party may not be true because when you find out that the expenditures are very very clear when you take a cost of a billboard around the state or FCT and the rest of them you find out that they spend more than what they are claiming you know and probably that is where Edok is making reference to that yeah. people are being protected in a way to make it not carry along I mean to carry out the details of their own spending and okay. then this spending is being uh, hidden behind another expenditure head. So right. that way you will not see the expenditure being said, okay, this is what was used. Okay, okay. Uh, gentlemen, yes, major point you raised. But... Oh, pardon me, Mark. Well, let me see if I can just take their thoughts, few seconds of their thoughts on this. I mean, uh, Mr. Yaitok, you had 70 uh, votes during that previous election in, in your state compared to the over 500,000 that the winner got. Uh, for Mr. Tanko, you had just about 3,799 votes compared to the 15 million votes that the winner in the presidential election, President Buhari, got. So uh, looking at this law, if I can just get a few seconds, do you think it gives newbies or people with or parties that people would naturally say are not in the mainstream, does it give you better chances at the polls? A few seconds, please. Mr. Tanko first. No, it cannot. It cannot. But I'm very, very proud of those figures to realize because these are figures that came out from people who believe in me. They voted for me based on their personal conviction. I didn't go out to give money for stomach infrastructure. 
I didn't do that. I didn't have polyon bands coming into my house and all. But it's only my world that I was selling, and then they were able to believe in it, and they were voting for me. So, but when you look at all of these other political That's parties, your, how many seconds, <laughs> Mr. Yeah, I'll tell you. There is a very big law that you should understand. If you have a strong opponent, make him look ridiculous so that even going to the court sounds funny. They made a mistake. They should have given me one vote. Mm. But anybody who is from a quiet bomb state knows who I am. Mm. And he knows that that's absurd. But make him look so so irrelevant that you even kill his spirit right. of thinking of doing anything. So that's what is the, a strategy. The and that is where, did. exactly, that's where this will <laughs> stop because you see the votes you had. So just, we just must quickly, I, I did say that we're going to, I, I did uh, tell uh, Mr. Tanko that we're going to talk about Loretta Onio Chia's appointment very quickly. Mm. And I just want to know, now that the Senate says, look, we're going to give her a fair hearing. Anybody who has complaints, uh, they should make sure they send their, their complaints to the National Assembly. Um, what are your thoughts on that? J just quickly, I don't know if Anybody who has an objection, have you sent yours? No, I have not. Do you but have I publicly made it. I'm making one now. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm, I'm objecting to it, and seriously. Not because of her uh, as a person, as Loretta. No, no, no. It's because of what she represents. She's already in, in the cabinet of government. She's been an appointee of Mr. President. It doesn't look... In fact, I will be so disappointed if Mr. President go ahead with this nomination. Yeah, Coming from say, the integrity level of Mr. President, yeah. we're trying to pollute a system already trying to rejuvenate itself. There are people who argue that, you know, people already have their biases anyway. Is it not better when it's open that they're, they're prone to well, even being well, fairer? My approach is very simple. Mm -hmm. What are the laws? Can you be in INEC as a card carrying member of, of a party? Is she? Can you be in INEC, um, the, the, the electoral board, as um, an appointee, a political appointee? Now, if these two are in the bridge already, what is the fair hearing? Are you bringing her to come and confirm that she has a party card? Or are you bringing her to come and confirm that she's an appointee of Mr. President? The Senate president has a lot of work to do. It's just a matter of telling Mr. President, oh, this things don't apply, please, just replace. It's a simple procedure. Why do you allow the whole country to go running down the integrity of Mr. President when you could easily have told him, sir, this is inappropriate? And then if Mr. President insists, that be it. How but if you that love thought? Mr. President so much, tell him that, sir, for, on account of one, two, is not okay. And it would have been solved long before the name even came. This brought me back to one uh, uh, post that I saw. Hassan Osman now was being asked a question that as a governor, how do you compare yourself with the present government, government that you see? He said, let me give you a story. What happened was that I was a governor and I was allocating GRA plot of land in Kaduna. So there's this That's particular true. individual who was from Kaduna State and he was the man in charge. So everybody applied and I as a governor applied. And when I applied, he saw my name. But when the list came out, every, uh, people were being given. But I was not given as a governor. So the man came to my office and said, Mr. Governor, I come to visit you to tell you that I saw your application applying for a plot of land in the GRA that we are allocating. But I'm here to tell you that it is not right. You are not supposed to apply. You are supposed to take care of the people who are, who are your, who you are governing. So I'm here presently to tear in your face your form. Look at it. I didn't give you, and I'm tearing, and I wish you best of luck. And as I was small cousin, I did not say, I say thank you for correcting me. This is leadership. Mm. That is how leadership is supposed to be. And if you want to be fair to the people, you exemplify by being fair to all and carrying everybody along. And that way, Nigeria will stay peacefully. It's a fine place to live, gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Early this morning. Ezekiel Talk is Director General of Nigeria First Project. And Yunusa Tanko is former presidential candidate of the National Conscience Party. We'll take a break now and we'll be back shortly. Please stay with us.